I'd like to welcome you to our devotional study today. We are in Exodus chapter 19. I encourage you to take your Bibles and turn there. And uh, you may also want a notebook so you can jot some things down that uh, we talk about and that the Holy Spirit brings to your mind so you can go back and study these things out in your own time. As we've been looking at Exodus chapter 19, we see that Israel is encamped uh, at the Mount for 11 months here at the Mount of God. And uh, we see the promise of the covenant in the first nine verses, We uh, and we have dealt with that. Now, as we come into verse 10 today, we see the preparation for entering into the covenant. And it says in Exodus chapter 19 and in verse 10, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes. And be ready against the third day, for the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves that ye go not up into the mount, or touch the border of it. Whosoever touches the mount shall surely be put to death. There shall not be in hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be a beast or man, it shall not live. When the trumpet soundeth long, they shall come up to the mount. And Moses went down from the mount unto the people and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day, come not at your wives. So as we look at this, some of the stuff that is mentioned in this, um, in these particular verses may be interesting to us, especially in the world that we live in today and, and uh, not understanding Jewish customs and all of the various things that go on here, but Really, what we see here are things that, that uh, even though we don't personally experience this kind of stuff today, there are certainly things in these verses that we can apply to our own lives. What we see here is we see the people preparing to meet with God, preparing to enter into this covenant that God is about to make with the nation of Israel. And as we look at this, friends, we're reminded of the importance of preparation of meeting with God. And Christian, let me ask you today, how often do you actually spend time in prayer, preparing your heart uh, for the worship of God, preparing your heart for what it is that God wants to say to you before you actually go to the house of God on the Lord's Day? You know, it's really important that we take time to prepare ourselves to meet with God. And you may say, well, we meet with God every day. I open up his word. I read his word. I spend time in prayer. And indeed, it is important that we be involved in that having continually cleansing ourselves, that we might be able to walk in fellowship with God. But friends, as we come together corporately as a body of believers, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be the one that hinders the working of the Holy Spirit God in our midst simply because I have not prepared my heart to seek the Lord. I've not prepared my heart to worship him and to allow God to speak to me the way that God desires to speak to me. I don't want to be the one that holds up what God wants to do in our midst simply because there is sin in my life that I have not dealt with. So what we're seeing here as we come into these verses is we are seeing these people prepare to meet with God. And the first way that they prepare is by sanctification. And we see that in verses 10 and 11. And that word sanctification simply means set apart. And it has, as children of God, it has a negative connotation, if I can put it that way. And it has a positive connotation. The negative aspect of it is that as Christians, we are set apart from the world, from the flesh, uh, from the devil. We are not to follow the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, or the pride of life. And we're set apart from those things. And we're not to be involved in those things and fulfilling the lust of those things. But the positive side of that is not only are we set apart from the world and the things of the world, but we are set apart unto God. We are set apart unto the service of God and to, to do what it is that he wants us to do. We are set apart to be involved in fellowshipping with him and walking with him and what a blessing that is. So we see that they, first of all, prepare themselves to meet God by sanctification. And that idea of sanctification involves cleansing. It involves coming to the place that we come before God and we make sure that we're clean and that we're cleansed of anything that is hindering us in our relationship with God. And we see that in verse 10 where it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people, and sanctify them today and tomorrow, 
and let them wash their clothes. So that idea of sanctify means to set apart, to make holy. And he says, let them sanctify themselves and let them wash their clothes. What they did in washing their clothes was symbolic and expressive of the internal cleansing that took place in their life. And friends, that's also what we are to be involved in doing today. We know that the Bible makes it very clear that we are all sinners and and that we all do things that, things that are against the name and the nature of God and, and that we need to come to that place and rather than just ignoring it or trying to cover it up, remember Proverbs 28, 13 says, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. If you want the mercy of God, then friends, you can't try to cover your sin up. You can't try to sweep it underneath the rug, so to speak, and pretend it doesn't exist. No, friends, if you want the mercy of God, then you need to, first of all, be honest with God about your sinful condition. And when we confess and forsake our sin, we'll have mercy. And the Bible says in 1 John 1, verse 9, it says, if we, notice that, if, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But friends, that only happens if we confess our sin. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, as we think about this idea of cleansing so that we're set apart unto God. In 2 Corinthians 7 and verse 1, it says, Having therefore these promises dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the sight of God. So friends, once again, we are reminded of the, of the importance of, of if we're going to walk in fellowship with God, we must cleanse ourselves of all filthiness of the flesh and spirit and perfect holiness in the sight of God. So we see that they, first of all, prepared themselves by sanctification and, and that, that, that sanctification involved cleansing. He needed to come to the place that they saw their sin as God saw their sin. And then that they confessed that sin and that they forsook that sin. But sanctification also involves the recognition of the need for preparation in view of the Lord's presence. Friends, sanctification reminds us that God is holy and that we are not. That we are sinful creatures. And in, our, in and of ourselves, we have no righteousness. But yet at the same time, friends, when we are coming into the presence of God, we must prepare ourselves. We must do our best to make sure that we are cleansed of sin, that we are walking in fellowship with God. And then, only, then and only then can God reveal himself to us the way that God desires to reveal himself to us. Notice what it says in verse 11 of Exodus 19. It says, and be ready against the third day, or when the third day comes, make sure you're ready. Because the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. So he tells them on the third day, the Lord is going to come down in, uh, in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. Now, keep in mind, when we were talking about verse 1 of this chapter, we looked at the number 3, and we mentioned that 3 is the number of manifestation. And once again here, God says that he's going to manifest himself to his people and that they need to prepare themselves um, for the presence of the Lord. And friends, let me just remind you today, and sometimes people might listen to this verse and say, well, you know, that's kind of a dumb way of putting it because God is everywhere. And yes, it is true. God is everywhere. But friends, I hope that you've been in services in a church that you know that there's a difference between the mere presence of God and the manifest presence of God. Yes, we know that God is everywhere, but friends, there are times when his people are pure, when we're walking in fellowship with him, when we're seeking to do what he is that God wants us to do. He manifests his presence in a very real way, and God shows up in a powerful way in a meeting or in a set of revival meetings, things of that nature. And he does that, friends, because of the simple truth that the people there have been careful to sanctify themselves before God and to prepare to meet with God. Friend, let me encourage you. As you go to the Lord's house to worship, take some extra time to make sure that there's nothing between your soul 
and the Savior. Yes, that's important every day as we come into his word and as we walk in fellowship with him. But it's also important to take some extra time any day that we're going to the house of God to make sure that we're clean, that there's nothing in my life that would hinder the manifest presence of God in the service. Have a great day.